Welcome to CFO Insights. I'm Jeff Thompson, President and CEO of IMA, the Institute of Management Accountants, which is one of the largest and most respected associations focused on advancing the profession of management accounting. I'm very pleased to welcome today's guest, Mr. Ben Mulling, who is CFO at Tente Casters in Hebron, Kentucky. He is also a member of IMA's Global Board of Directors and is a certified management accountant. Thank you and welcome, Ben. Thank you. Ben, do you believe that a skills gap exists between what accounting educators teach and what CFOs need from their staff? You know, I, I really do. I think a lot of times um, I do some, some adjunct teaching, and I think a lot of times there tends to be more of a focus on, um, you know, the basic framework, whether it's just debits and credits and financial statements, which are key skills, but um, often we maybe cover in one class what should be taken maybe four classes, and these are things like communication skills, um, leadership skills. Um, I also think there needs to be more of a focus a little bit on um, problem solving and analytical side of it. Um, you maybe touch on that in a managerial accounting course, uh, but a majority of your courses don't touch on that a lot. And new people coming in the profession, I think that's one of the, the gaps that exist is just being able to look at something from a bigger picture and saying, um, you know, how do I solve this issue? Not, I don't have a one, two, three step of how to do something or how to make an entry, but I have to look at something and actually think about it from an analytical standpoint. Um, and I, I think that is something that people coming in the profession is really are struggling with. Thanks, Ben. And just expanding a little bit more on this gap, how does this gap in reality affect and influence um, professionals and organizations uh, in, in the real world. So there's the gap, but in reality, how does it affect organizations in improving performance, et cetera? I think it requires accounting professionals and organizations as a whole to actually uh, be very aggressive in their continuing education approaches. Um, you can't be satisfied with just getting you know an accountant right out of school and, and then building um, you know, just basic technical skills with them to do their job. You need to be more aggressive at what are areas that I want them to improve upon? How do I include them in my network? How do I get them involved in the profession? Because I think in a lot of these type of atmospheres is where um, key skills, leadership skills, um, communication skills, teamwork skills, that's where those things are developed is when you get involved in things like that. And if you don't get them involved in that and you don't actively continually try to get them involved in that, the skills just aren't going to be developed. And so it's forcing uh, candidates and um, organizations as a whole to make sure they're keeping up, I guess, on their employees, so to say, to make sure that they are going after these sort of skills, that they are including them in, in events and in tasks that would help them build on these skills and improve on that side. And I know that you do a lot of voluntary work and you also do a lot of teaching uh, finance and accounting to various levels of students. Uh, is there a particular age that uh, students should be taught finance and accounting skills? And if so, what would be your input? Well, I'm, I probably went a little overboard on this. And if you ask my wife, it's probably not the age of six, which is when I started reading basic finance cartoon books to my to my son um, to teach him on these things. Um, you know, maybe that's too far, but. I think it's it's definitely critical that this somehow gets implemented, whether it's in high school, whether it's in junior level or senior level classes. Um, I think a lot of times we give the give the kids an option to say, "Hey, I'll take woodworking, or I'll take home economics, or something like that," and we learn how to build a birdhouse and we learn how to sew a button onto a jacket, but we don't teach them how to balance a checkbook. We don't teach them the concept of how student loans work. And, uh, you know, I can't remember the last time that I personally built a birdhouse, but I can remember the last time I balanced my checkbook. Um, and it's something that I think a skill that is a daily skill that we just don't teach kids coming out of high school. And I think it's very important that we start doing that in some form or fashion. And just moving to another uh, leg on the career ladder, moving to seasoned professionals, seasoned CFOs. What do you think is the single greatest challenge facing CFOs? with dealing with a new generation of employees? Um, I think there's just, like we talked about communication, I think there is different means of communicating between somebody who says older, been in the profession maybe 30 years, and somebody who's been in the profession five years. Um, 
generations change, the way we approach things change. Um, my way of looking at a problem solving is how can I utilize something new, innovative, maybe use technology to my benefit. Um, whereas somebody maybe who's not as comfortable with that, who's been in the profession longer, may go at it from a whole different approach and you know grab the marker board or something. It's it's totally different. So um, I think it's key not that, and this is where we talk about continuing education. It's not that we just say, oh, continuing education stops at the age of 35 because now you have 15 years of experience. Continuing education continues. I mean, it goes on. And so whether you've been in the profession five years or 35 years, uh, I think you have to continue to push yourself to learn new things and be comfortable with new things. And for me, that may be something in merger and acquisition, but somebody who's been in that for 30, 30 years, it may be something technology related. Um, so I think it's key that, you know, older generation CFOs and newer generation CFOs continue to work towards, you know, how do we build together? You know, how do we, how do we come closer as far as what skills we need to improve on and filling our gaps. It goes both ways. Ben, it's been a great pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you again for your CFO insights. If you have any questions or comments about today's conversation with Ben Mulling, feel free to contact me directly at jthompson at imanet.org. You can also visit IMA's YouTube channel to view other great videos from IMA. Thank you again for watching.